Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm going to wait for Sister White to tune in. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to have a night in the glory tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I promise you, you've never heard a message like this one before. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Sister White, there you are. God bless you. Amen. I love the Lord for having you tune in tonight and to sing in His presence. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It's adding you. Hallelujah. Well, glory, Lord. Hello, Hi, sister. Everybody. God bless Hello, you. everybody. How are you on this beautiful Wednesday evening? God, God <laughs> evening. I am blessed. I am highly favored of the Lord. And I know he's got a word burning in my spirit. I know he's got a song burning in yours. And I'm ready to release this word right after you sing. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Do you feel Thank led to your say message. anything before we start? Do you feel led to say anything before we start? Yeah, I was thinking about this message, and I was just thinking about what the Lord had been putting on my heart about building our mm. inheritance with Him. So yes. All of us working together in the harvest field is what it takes because mm. I may be able able to reach someone with a truth that maybe someone else can't it may Amen. be my testimony and my truth of my life my transparency that leads yeah. someone to the lord because when we're honest right. him we're open about our lives that we're not perfect that we mm -hmm. did things that you know we're sinners too that while we Amen. were sinners christ yes, died for us you know it's about that and people are I want to say that that they discount people when they shouldn't by looking yeah. at the book. You know, not they're looking at the cover. They don't. You know, know what's here, here's, you're right because I mean a lot of people will see um, they'll see tattoos from one end to the other and think, oh, this person needs Jesus. Well, they got more Jesus in them than we do sometimes you know yes. like, but we'll we'll look at them and say oh they need to get saved they are saved if they truly repent of their sin and turn to jesus christ they are saved and we need to learn to start loving by the love of god instead of loving by the looks yes Amen. and i mean and when you think about the very fact that that esau sold his birthright for that bowl of lint for a bag of beans sold yeah his birthright that's how Come little on. it meant to him and our birthright our birthright should mean so much to us that we Man, want to right. go out and go after the souls it should be our heart to go after the souls and, and and to increase our inheritance with the lord because if we're with the lord we are inheritors with christ yes we are so it's not about, you know, people think that, oh, you know, I've done my part, but have you? I mean, what is your main goal in life and how much yeah. of your part have you given to the Lord? But but that's what he was yeah. talking to me about um, right before. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Amen. Amen. We just give him glory yes. and thank him so much because Amen. not one of us is worthy. So, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Worthy. <laughs> Nobody's worthy but yes. Jesus. Amen. He's yes, worthy. Lord. And uh, though our sins be as scarlet, He will make them white as snow. Amen. We just have to have faith in Him and believe in Him to do it. 
put our hand in his like a little child and be obedient. So I'm going to sing a song tonight called The Field of Souls. Um, we don't Ooh. own the rights to this song, but when yes. I heard it, it just totally touched my heart because wow. it talks about the different people and the way they're serving Christ. So when yes. you listen to the words, you'll get insight into the heart of God. So I really love this song. Amen. We work the field of souls together, you and I. Some yes. fields are blooming now, and other fields are dry. We mm, are not true. the same, but differences aside. We will work the field of souls to gather you and I. Yes, Lord. One is off to foreign soil to work mm. a distant land, and another anchors close to home to hold a neighbor's hand. Yes. Tell me who has served the Father the most and mm. who has labored best. Wow. Oh, that life devoted to our God, that devotion will be blessed. Thank we work the field of souls together, you and I. Some fields are blooming now. And other fields are dry. We are not the same. But differences yes, aside, we will work the field of souls together, you and I. Amen. One shouts the gospel in the streets. For everyone to hear his mm. bold to everyone he meets, and the word is loud and clear. Oh, and yeah. another cries alone and prays in silence on her knees before the throne day after day. Where human eyes don't see, we work the field of souls to gather you and I. Some fields are blooming now, oh, and other fields are dry. We yes. are not the same. Oh, but differences aside, I know we will work the field of souls together, you and I. Oh, together, together. Oh, we will work the field of souls. Together, Jesus. you and I. Oh, Some oh, fields are blooming now. Oh, yes, and other fields are dry. We are not the same. Oh, but differences aside, yes, I oh. know. We will work the field of souls together, you and I. 
together. You, you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love it. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. God bless you for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for having you sing tonight, sister. I can't wait till Sunday. We're talking about the bones. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm excited about Sunday's sermon entitled, What's Going On Within the Bones? I can't wait for you to sing a song about the bones. Let me tell you, you sung a song tonight about the fields, and don't hang up yet. God gave me a word for you as you were singing tonight. And I have gotten so much great feedback about people being delivered and touched and blessed by hearing the singing that God is doing through you. So to God be the glory. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So before I get into preaching tonight, the Spirit of the Lord is already here. I feel His glory so strong right now upon me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So nice, I hear the Lord say, I hear the Lord say to tell you, as you have gleaned, as you have gleaned the fields, as you have gathered in the fields, not only have you gathered in the fields, but you have dug in the fields, and the roots of what you have dug up, the roots of past rejection in not only other people's lives, but in your own life, you've dug up the roots of past rejection. You've dug up the roots of unforgiveness. And the Lord said, because you've planted faith, hope, and love, these three things, the greatest of these is love. The love of God shall bloom forth in a mighty way in your life and through the life of Ricky. The Lord said, as you have given, now you will receive. This is the year of Jubilee. This is the year of Pentecost. And oh, you shall Lord. receive everything you sowed for. Though you have sowed in tears, you will reap a harvest of joy. In oh, Jesus' name, God. hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, that's Father. That's what the Thank Lord you, told me Father. to say. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Amen. what better, better way can we worship him than in love Amen. and in spirit and in, spirit and in truth. That's it. Amen. So Thank you, he Lord. does, I'm, I'm going to use it for his glory. We've already talked Thank about you, all of this. And it's, Amen. there are so many dreams we have around that. And I Come just on. know that he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. Thank and you, I Lord Jesus. Give him glory. I <laughs> give him glory. I feel the glory of the Lord right here, right now. I feel his glory so strong. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, so if y'all have your Bibles, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to start into the service now. Father, I pray that tonight that you would hide me behind the cross. Heal this flesh tonight. And Lord, anoint these lips of clay. Put the fire back on the clay again, Lord. And Lord, I th thank you that as people hear that the wood that was dried out would begin to burn for the glory of God. Let us begin to churn and burn for your glory as you take us from glory to glory, as you take us from the curtain to the cross. Father, I pray this in your precious name that lives would be changed forever in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, amen. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I felt the anointing on that. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. So if y'all have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Second Samuel, the 23rd chapter, verse 11 through 12. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Actually, go to verse 10 with me first. He arose and smote the Philistine until his hand was weary, and his hand clave under the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. They only came back to get the spoils of war. They already had the victory. So they were going back just to get the spoils of war because the victory had been won by the Lord through this brother who had the sword in his hand 
and he was fighting till the sword literally clave to his hand. How many of you have ever found yourself in a time of prayer and intercession? Actually, several friends of mine have interceded, and I've watched blood pour from their nose because they were in such deep intercession with God. Some of you might not believe that that don't bother me let me tell you i've seen it though they were under so much intercession with the lord under that revival tent that their nose began to bleed because they were praying so hard just like jesus when he prayed and the drops of sweat fell as blood upon the earth your blood vessels if you get into enough of a moment, blood vessels will rupture in your body. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. But have you ever been in a moment like this, brother, where you're cleaving to the Bible and you can't let it go and you're just like, Lord, whatever you got for me, just do it. Just do it. I can't hold on much longer. God, I'm at the end of my line. I'm at the end of my rope, God, and I'm not far from the swing. And you just cleave to the word, and you can't even let go of your Bible because you're so in intercession. You're such in a place where, God, if you don't do it, it won't get done. If you're in that place right now, God said, I hear you, daughter. I hear you, son, says the Spirit of grace. Do not be discouraged. Do not be downhearted for your prayers have reached heaven. And though you have sown in sorrow, you will reap in gladness. This declares, declares the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Glory God. Amen. So here's the rest of what I was telling you about. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. Oh, uh, verse 11. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Herite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. You know why a lot of people lose their blessing? Because they flee from their enemy. When the enemy comes calling and says, do you remember when you did this, 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 and this? They'll say, yes. And then they'll feel unworthy to follow after God. They'll feel unworthy to fight for their inheritance, and the enemy's got them whipped. See, I told my son in the Lord, I said, buddy, I said, here's the truth of the matter. People say, well, the devil's after my calling. No, he ain't. I want to share a secret with you that the Lord shared with me. The devil ain't after your calling, baby. He's after your character because if he can mess with your character, he's already got your calling in the bag. Hello, somebody. Are you breathing? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. If he can mess with your character, he's already got your calling in the bag. He's already got your calling knocked out of his way. If you are affected with a bad character. The enemy ain't worried about your calling because he's already got it. Is somebody getting blessed this afternoon? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, here we go. But, but he stood in the midst of the ground and, and defended it. And slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. And that's where I'm going to stop. But I wanted to let y'all know, let's get into that. I'm going to preach to y'all a lesson. A, 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 uh, hold on, let me see what I titled it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm I'm so happy tonight. Thank you, Jesus. The fundamental is in the lentil. The fundamental is in the lentil. Father, 
for the remainder of the service. Bless your word, bless the reading of the word, and bless the hearers in Jesus' name. Let them not just be hearers, but doers, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Richard, God bless you. Jerry, Tommy, God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I was doing research on the lentils. It was a field of lentils. And a lentil was a very common food around that area. It was a common food. You could get a lentil anywhere. You could get the lentil from the next door neighbor down the road. I mean, you could get it from the farmer's market in the, in the square. I mean, there it was an endless supply of lentils. And I asked the Lord, I said, why in the world would anybody fight to the death over lentils? And, and, and it was food that was not scarce. It was food that could be obtained anywhere. There is not just a lesson in the lentils. There is fundamentals in the lentils. The word fundamental means forming a necessary base or core of central importance. Wait a minute. Does that sound familiar to y'all? Hebrews 6 and 1. Not laying again the foundation. Not walking again in the fundamentals that we started in. Not laying the base down again that we started in in God. Now it's time we go from glory to glory. But how many of you know that between the from and the to, there's a hallway called hell, amen? We're going to go through some hell to get to the next hallway that's going to lead us to heaven. Are you understanding what I'm preaching today? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. Some people have been stuck in their formed faith. They got saved. Great. But they stop at saved. They stop at following God. Well, I love Jesus. I'm going to read my Bible, and that's it. No, you got to do more than just read your Bible. See, I told an officer one time that was being a smart aleck toward me. He said, I bet it's hard for you because God called you to preach, and he didn't call me, but I'm a Christian. And he sat there with a smirk on his face, and I said, let me tell you something, brother. God didn't save you to sit you down on a suit and a tie on a, on a bench on Sunday morning and make you look pretty. I said, he called you to get out there and win souls too. And I said, you're going to give an account before God for that one day, buddy. He took off running. He said, I ain't got time for this. And he got off and left. Let me tell you something. The Bible said, Jesus said, the word of God, God in flesh, said these words. At that moment, do not think of what you are going to say. That hour. Do not think of what you were going to say when they bring you before men. Don't rehearse it before your mouth or your mind. Don't rehearse the words that you're going to say before them on my behalf. For at that very moment, the Holy Spirit will speak through you. Amen. Amen. The warfare increases when you're entering new dimensions. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Some people have been formed in faith, but they stay conformed in their flesh. Oh, I'm going to say that again. They were formed in faith, but they conform to their flesh. They never get any further than the front pew or the back pew and and they they'll uh, give their money on Sunday or in Wednesday and and they'll listen to the Lord, but they don't do very, very much other than that. They're lukewarm in their faith. And Jesus said, "I'd rather you be hot or cold and not lukewarm." He said, "I can handle you cold, 
and I can handle you hot, but I can't handle you lukewarm. Do you know actually what that was referring to? It was referring to water irrigation systems. And the irrigation systems had one of two uses. One, it would be cold or refreshing. Two, it would be hot or therapeutic. He said, I can handle you if you're refreshing or therapeutic, but he said, if you just lukewarm, you're going to make me sick. There's a lot of people that are making God sick with their service toward him. He's like, please get on fire for me. Please follow me. Please surrender more so I can pour into you more. Hallelujah. Because the more you surrender, the more God pours into you. Are you hearing what I'm preaching tonight? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But see, the enemy, I'm sure he let him know what was coming. He said, if you cross the line, I'm going to cut you in two pieces. I'm going to kill you if you cross the line. And the enemy didn't believe him, so he like, ah, let's see. And he grabbed his sword, went across the line of the enemy, his, the good enemy. And the Bible says that the man of God killed the Philistines. And the Lord said, Son, I want you to actually do a lesson on the name of this man, Shema. Listen to this, y'all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. His name means loss. Shema. His name means loss or desolate. Are you breathing? It means loss or desolate. He decided when the enemy came calling his name that day, hey, desolate one, hey, sick one, hey, bound one. Let the sick say I am healed. Let the bound say I am free. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord Jesus. You ain't got to live by the title that everybody else gives you. Praise the Lord Jesus. You live by what God gives you to say. Amen. Somebody preach with me. Say amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me know y'all breathing. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Listen to this, y'all. The Bible said that when Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross, that he goes to the house of a man he healed named Simon the leper. He was no longer a leper because Jesus healed him. But yet people identified him as a leper. Even though Jesus healed him, they still saw a spot on his life. Good Lord, have mercy. I don't care how much you do to show people that, that I've changed for the better. I'm not the man I used to be. I'm not the woman I used to be out there in the, for the women watching. I mean, I, I'm just saying, you know. I'm not who I used to be. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. They're going to look at you and say, yeah, but what about this and what about that? And what, what about the other thing that you used to do? Now, there's a key word, I used to do. I, I used to be like that. Paul said, no murderer, no fornicator, no blasphemer, no liar shall enter the kingdom of heaven. And he said, such were, there's the key word, were some of you, but now you've been changed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been ch changed by his spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say this. Like Jabez, he was given a request to God to not let let his name any longer affect his destiny. First Chronicles 4 and 10, Jabez prayed a prayer, and at the end of it, he said that I may not cause pain. What does the name Jabez mean? I bore him 
and his name is pain and he said lord bless me indeed and expand my territory enlarge my tent state that i may not cause pain let me be greater than what i was born under hallelujah holy ghost thank you lord jesus amen i've heard people say for years oh i was born under a bad sign let me tell you honey i was born under the sign of the cross i was born again let me say it like that i was born again under the sign of the cross are you hearing me glory to god if somebody can't get excited about that i'm sorry for you thank you lord jesus amen hallelujah like benjamin she said his name will be ben onai the son of my suffering and his father said no his name shall be benjamin he is the son of my right hand lord have mercy thank you jesus The lentil. There's a lesson. Hey, Pastor Mike, God bless you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just like Shema, there's a lesson in the lentils. His name, the name Jabez, man, I, I bore him in pain. Shema also so was fighting for the future of his inheritance and his inheritors those that would come after him he was fighting for them are you hearing me he was fighting for those that would come after him thank you holy ghost i love you lord jesus glory lord amen Tammy, God bless you. Glad you could tune in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Chronicles 4 and 10 was where we read about Jabez. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When Abraham gave to Melchizedek, the pre incarnated Christ, when he gave to Melchizedek, a tent of his livelihood. Let's read what it says real quick. In the book of Hebrews, oh, I'm excited in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 17. I'm having fun, y'all. Hallelujah, Jesus. That wasn't bad. That was a pretty good note. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For you know, for ye are not. Oh, I think I got that. Oh, I got that. Uh, okay. Hebrews 12 and 17. I was in the wrong right one, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 17. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inter inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Well, wait, I've got the wrong thing here. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, y'all. Hebrews 7 and 2. I'm sorry. Dear Lord Jesus, have mercy. Help me, God. Hebrews 7 and 2. <laughs> well, glory. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to laugh about it. I know I'm dyslexic. Amen. That's all right with me. Jesus loves me anyways. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 7 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hebrews. All right. Hebrews 7 and 2. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 7 and 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by in by inter, inter 
interpretation, a king of righteousness. This is talking about Melchizedek. So let's just go back and reread that one section. I'm sorry, y'all. My eyes are messing with me. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, Melchizedek, and after that also king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace, the king of righteousness. This is the pre-incarnated one, the one who is and was and is to come. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm trying to find it. Oh, well, here we go. Verse 4. I'm sorry, y'all. Hebrews 7 and verse 4. Now consider how great this man was under whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils and verily they that are of the sons of Levi who have received the office of the priesthood of the people according to the law that is of their brethren, though they came out of the loins of Abraham. The Bible says, the scripture I'm trying to show y'all and find right there, is that when Abraham sowed to Melchizedek, Levi was still in the loins. The prophets was still in the loins of his father. Are you here? Hearing me. He had not yet been born, but Abraham sowed for the inheritance. He planted for the inheritance. He watered it with the message of God. He watered it with faith. He planted, he watered, and God brought the increase. Somebody Better get excited up in here with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I hate when I can't actually find exactly what I'm looking for, but hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now let's get back to the lentil, shall we? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now let's get back to the lentil. Instead of fighting, there, there was another man, though, that instead of fighting for the lentils, instead of fighting for his birthright, he gave it away. His brother Jacob grabbed his heel and pulled him out when he was supposed to be the firstborn. And he said, like, I'm the firstborn. She tied a... Uh, a ribbon around him and said, your name is Jacob for you're a deceiver. He was given the name deception when he was born. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, Lord. But a, ah, shame, mama. But a bowl of lentils ah, changed his birthright. He was the deceiver. But let me tell you something. The deceiver got deceived because when he got his brother's birthright, it was a legal purchase, so he owned the birthright. But his father didn't know about it. His mother knew what had happened, and his mother deceived his father. Abraham and Isaac are about to meet again. Abraham's gone. This is Isaac about to die. And Jacob says, Bless me, Father, for I am Esau. Red Harry. <laughs> Red and Harry is what the name Esau means. Red Harry. So he was a hairy man. He was hairy all over his body. And he said, Father, bless me before you die. And, and he said, I hear 
He said, I feel Esau, but I hear the hey, I hear deception in your voice. I hear Jacob in your voice. Glory to God. Oh, Rabbi Shanda Karaboke. He said, I hear deception. I, I, I feel Esau, but I, I hear Jacob talking. The spirit of discernment. He was going blind, but yet he could hear in the spirit. And he, he said, I, he said, the voice ain't matching with the body. But he blessed him as if he was Esau, and it was actually Jacob. And Jacob runs because his brother tells what he done. Isaac is infuriated when he dies because he gave his blessing to the deception. So he dies, and he curses Esau. To me, that's a curse, what he gave him. Your hand will be against every man and every man's hand against you. That's a curse. You'll be the servant to every man. On his deathbed, his son said, don't you have enough blessing for me too, daddy? Now check this out. I, I wouldn't even go in here, but the Holy Ghost just took me to a different turn. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory, Lord. So he goes off and gets married. His mama sets up a, a meet and greet, a date for him and his cousin, which back then it was biblical and legal to do that, but he is set up with his future wife, meet her. Anyways, he says, I'm going to work to get this girl. I'm going to work for my woman that I want. But instead of, after seven years of working in the field for his father-in-law, which was his uncle, they got drunk that night. They were well drunk. And the veil could not be lifted until the next morning. Oh, oh, oh Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. So when he lifts the veil, the woman he thought he married was the other woman. It was the, the other cousin. It was the one that he didn't want. And he got mad and he was going to kill his uncle. And his uncle said, whoa, 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 you don't understand. I had to give you this, this one first. Why? He said, because. Because it's the law of the firstborn. <laughs> There's a law set in place. And he said, if I'd have gave you the one you wanted, Sarah and Rachel, he said, if I would have gave you the one you wanted, I believe it was Rachel that was first and then Sarah that was next. But if I would have gave you the one you wanted, I would have had broken the law of the firstborn. So the very, very law that he stole with the birthright ended up biting him with the beans. The beans ended up biting Joseph. Come on, somebody. <laughs> wow, the dog barked as I laughed. That was funny. It coincided. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. But Joseph, the dreamer, Joseph, he, he brings his grandsons to meet Jacob, who is now Israel, who wrestled with God and won only because God let him win. Hallelujah, Holy Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He meets God, and, and the Lord blesses Jacob. He said, what's your name? He says, my name is Jacob. I'm a deceiver. What was he doing? He was confessing his sins before God. And God said, your name will no longer be Jacob. Your name will be Israel. 
who have wrestled God and prevailed. That's what the name Israel means. Coy, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Brandon, God bless you. Amen. Amy, Mariah, God bless y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now check this out. He's meeting Joseph. And Joseph is with his grandchildren. Joseph is bringing the children to meet grandpa. Israel is with his grandchildren. And uh, he looks at them to bless them. And he puts his left hand over the right he crosses his hands the one that should have been receiving the firstborn blessing receives the last blessing he switches his hands he blesses the firstborn after he blesses the secondborn he blesses the first last and the last birth Help me, Holy Ghost. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. He crosses his hands, and Joseph is infuriated with his daddy. And he said, what have you done? And his father, before he dies, looks at him, and he says, what I have done will stay done. I know what I've done. It's finished. What did he do? He reversed the curse that he put on himself. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I ain't going to let this curse go down to another generation. I slipped up. I sinned. I messed up. But it ain't going any further than me. And he blesses his grandchildren, but he reverses the curse. So what does he do? He stops a generational curse before it can continue. Lord have mercy. And Joseph never knew it, nor his brothers. It was a secret that Abe, that Israel carried. It was a secret that Israel carried to his grave. And he said, I know what I've done. And so in death, the curse was reversed. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. <laughs> the law had been paid for. Everything was set back in order. Like, like, like Doc would have said on Back to the Future, the timeline had been healed. Hallelujah, Jesus. The timeline had been restored to its original place. And God set everything back in order when Israel did that. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I'm almost done, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. I know I've been on here a little bit, but it's the hour for revival, and y'all been on here about an hour with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. But Esau gave up the birthright. Because he didn't care for it. God changed his name from Esau to Edom. Edom means hairy. Uh, Edom means red. And the Edomites, when you read about the Edomites in the Bible, you're reading about Edom. You're reading about Esau's inheritance. You're reading about the descendants of Esau when you read Edom. And in the land of Edom, that's Esau, he went away and he lived his own life. He did his own thing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Sister Jones, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He didn't fight for his birthright so, so he lost it 
But now check this out. The Bible said he sought it carefully with tears. Hebrews 12 and 17. Who did he seek the birthright back from? He didn't seek God for his birthright back. He sought his brother Jacob, who now had the birthright of the firstborn. And he said, please, I messed up. Give me my birthright back. I've squandered my birthright. Just like the prodigal son now. But unlike the prodigal son, he didn't receive his birthright. Esau died without his birthright. So he didn't get the land that was promised to him. The Muslims. Mm, Jesus. The Muslims are the sons of Esau. They're the descendants of Esau. I think that's amazing. When God saved Jacob and he put him in the family, he's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Now see, Abraham, the father of faith. Isaac, the joy of the faith. And then Jacob, the deceiver. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. He is the God of righteousness, the God of faith. He's the God of joy. And he's still God even when we're deceived. Lord have mercy. Glory to God. See, let me share that with you. He said if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our Oh, somebody better get the shot. I'm about ready to run all over this place. Well, thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel my help coming on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. And God changed his name to Edom. He, he sought carefully, Hebrews 12, 17, he sought carefully with tears. To receive his birthright back. But he wouldn't get it. He died without his birthright. Scripture says in the book of Revelation, let no man take your crown. Don't give up your birthright for nobody. Are you hearing me? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But God, God wants to give you a birthright. He, he wants to give you a new name and a white stone. Revelation 2 and 17. Will you let him give you a new name tonight? Will you let him give you the birthright back? That's right. You better preach that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Worldly sorrow works death, but godly sorrow works repentance towards God. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. Esau was worldly sorry when he should have been godly sorry. David was godly sorry. That's why he got to keep his birthright in God because he called out and said, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And put a right spirit within me. He said, I was in the wrong spirit when I sinned. And I don't want to lose the Holy Ghost. I saw my father-in-law lose it. He said, I saw Saul die without the spirit. I want the spirit of God. And I don't want to lose it. And he began to intercede and to pray and to plead for God to have mercy on him and not to take away the Holy Spirit from him. Maybe some of you today are like the prodigal son. You've squandered your birthright. But like the father of the prodigal, God the Father in heaven wants to restore to you your birthright. If you're watching this, you're saying, Brother H.R., 
that's me. I've squandered my birthright. I've done my own thing. I've went my own way. I'm tired of doing things my way. I want to do it for God. I want you to pray this prayer with me and me with your whole heart. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead. And I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to 8 Char Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother 8 Char. It's always the hour for revival. Write to me. Let me know what God has done for you. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. Hour for revival at yahoo.com. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you're sick in your body, I curse every spirit of infirmity. I command a creative miracle in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I declare you healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Receive the miracle. You will live and not die to declare the work of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. Father, deliver everybody bound. Set everybody free in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name right now. Jesus, I pray that you baptize everybody in the Holy Ghost in fire, a refreshing fire, a refining fire, and a refreshing in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, fire, 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 washing of the water of the word. Try to do that prophetically in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory, hallelujah. I love y'all. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification for more videos just like this on YouTube. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye. And if you'd like to um, support this ministry, you can do so by going to Cash App and typing in Cash Tag Hour for Revival, where your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here but abroad as well. I love you. God bless.